welcome back to the allotment and another winter's day in July. The weather has been so bad for the past couple of weeks. I've really even struggled to find a nice day to do the video. Um, it's still even really a bit too windy today. Um, the wind has just been non-stop constant and it's pretty much killed my peas. I'll show you them in a minute, but they're, they've all just collapsed in on themselves. So I'm gonna have to have, sorry about the cockerel. I'm gonna have to have a look at that today and see if I can do something. But I have got some news. Um, I don't know if you remember me talking about my third allotment that I said I was gonna have to get rid of because it was just too much, too far away and it's not anywhere near this plot. Um, it's the one that I've got all the tomatoes in um, and all of my cucumbers. So this plot over here at the back, we'll go over and have a look at it in a minute, um, had a notice put on it, a notice to quit. So we contacted the council and asked them if we could swap our plot that's all the way down the other end of the allotment to this one here and he said we can. So that one over there is ours now and it's going to be really close and it's a massive flat plot. So what I thought I could do is actually for next year is put a couple of polytunnels on it and dig into the ground and then I can actually have somewhere where I can plant all my tomatoes and cucumbers actually into the ground instead of having them all in the tubs that really isn't working out very well because I can't plant into the ground in that polytunnel not easily anyway especially because it's shared so that's quite exciting um so we'll go and have a look at that now my only problem is I have got a couple of squashes down there and one of them is doing really really well I um, can't remember which one it is but I want to move it um, I want to move it and I'm not sure if I should or not. Well, I, I'm going to have to, otherwise it'll have to just stay there and it won't be mine anymore. So I've got an idea of how I'm going to move it and we'll go up and I'll, have a, I'll show you what I've done to the tomatoes in the polytunnel and I'm thinking that I'm going to try and move it like that. But I've also got all of my cucumbers down in that other allotment that I think I'm going to have to sacrifice because I don't think that I can move cucumbers. They're all actually in a bed i built a, you know there's a bed in there i filled it up with brand new compost and planted the cucumbers into it and i don't actually think that i can move them i think they've got a tap root on them and if i move them i'm going to kill them which is going to be a bit of a shame really because i've got about 15 cucumber plants down there and they're all really healthy and really productive but i think i'm going to have to just sacrifice them to and give them to the new person if they want them when they move in but let's go and have a quick look at the space over on this allotment first and I'll show you what we've got. So this is the plot and it is massive and it's really, really flat as well, which is going to be so helpful for putting. I was thinking I could put two polytunnels on it, both here, and then I still probably have space around it to do other things as well. It was a jungle. You can see at the back here, we'll go and have a close up, but the, the, um, the weeds were as high as me. So we've strimmed it all. So you can see it all needs, all needs collecting up now from where we've strimmed it. But it's a really, really, really good space. Um, and I'm really excited about it. It's going to be so good to have these. I've just got this vision of having these two big polytunnels on it um, and all dug into the floor with beds and everything. I think it's going to be amazing. But we'll go and have a little close up walk around. So these are the two sheds and there's a load of decking boards here which is brilliant because our shed i don't know if i've ever shown it to you in our first allotment with the chickens the decking's all just gone through um so we can have those decking boards and actually fix our decking so that'll be good it won't be dangerous anymore <laughs> um so that's the shed we go around here look. so this is all the way along it's really big really flat and then it's all still quite weedy at the back there. I think there's a little, little box at the back, a little small greenhouse box at the back. Yeah, elderberry tree, I think, over there. And then it goes all the way around. It's a great space. So back in the polytunnel, um, it's the tomatoes are still doing pretty poor really but I've kind of decided it's it's totally my fault really I think I've picked some quite temperamental types I've gone for some hybrid types some and I didn't like I said last time I haven't gone for any of the the usual suspects that I'm well known as really great producers so I think that's kind of my fault really for not thinking about putting backup ones in and um, they're doing all right I mean they're behind me over here and they're all they're all fruiting and they've all got lots of tomatoes on them but I just feel like they could be better and like I said I can't it's just I can't dig into the floor um I've looked at it and I just it's not 
right now at this time of year it's just not feasible to do it and plus it's not just mine as well there's other people sharing it with me as well um but never mind you know it is what it is and i've done what i can do but i've somebody told me about a channel called um larry hall and his kiddie pools or something like that anyway i had a look at it and i really liked the idea so i've been trying to work with a version of it with some of the stuff in here and it seems to be the, the stuff that I've done looks quite good so let's look down here and I'll just show you and this is what I'm going to do with the squash. So what I did was I went and got, <clears throat> this is a melon, I went and got a couple of um, canvas bags that I had hanging around the house. They're just uh, supermarket canvasy bags um, and I planted in, as a that's um, a tumbling tomato, um, I planted that in there and then I moved this melon, this melon was in this tub here and I moved it into here to give it more space so it could be flatter, you know, like um, they're acting like grow bags really. Um, and there isn't a lot of um, compost in them either, which is really, really good. And I really like this idea and I think this might be what I might go with in the future for anything that I don't have um, that I can't dig into the ground. Because this melon's looking really healthy and I didn't know if it would cope very well with being transplanted, but it's done really well and it does have, it's got little watermelons on it there as well and it's growing away. Um, and it's looking much healthier now than the one over here. It's still in a pot um, that's a lot smaller. And that one up there as well, it's a lot smaller. Um, so I really think this extra, doing it like this and giving it this extra root space is good. It's a good idea. And I put it in one of these little um, plastic container lids as well because it's storing the water in there as well so that they can still keep taking as much water as they want. This one's dried out a bit now. Um, the tomato looks really healthy like that as well. So this is the plan. I went and bought these bags last night. Lidl's the only place that I can seem to find these bags at the minute, um, these canvas bags. Um, so I'm going to put some compost in this at the bottom, um, fold it down and then I'm going to go down there and I'm going to try and put the squash in it. I don't know if it's going to survive. I've read a lot on it. I've been doing a lot of reading on it in the past few days and it seems to be that there's sort of a 50-50 chance. It might die back a bit. It might it might be all right. It might be totally fine. So what I'm thinking I'll do is I'll try and dig it up the best I can without damaging it in any way. I'll put it in here um, and then I'm going to find a nice sunny space for it over in my second allotment um, and then give it a good feed, I think. And we'll just see how it goes. There isn't, I mean, there isn't much else I can do if I want any chance of it. I mean, it's the healthiest looking squash I've got. Out of all the squashes I've planted, that's the only one that actually looks like it might actually give me some squash. So I'm really a bit, a bit loath to, to lose it. So it's the best chance I've got. So I'm going to give it a go and we'll see what happens. So let's get some compost in here first. I'm sat on the bag of compost. Right, let's fold this down a bit. Well, this seems quite a good one, this, because it's more of um, a hessian sack, isn't it, than, than those canvas bags. So that might be a bit nicer for it. It's a bit more um, per permeable. Is that the word? Yeah. Right. So I've got it like folded down a bit, like that. And then I don't want to put too much in because I want it to be more like, um, more like a throw bag. Just noticed over here on the floor there must have been a stray a stray pea seed that's on the floor there's a little mini pea plant just popping up over there with one little flower on it <laughs> in the middle of the floor right so let's get all this get some of this compost in here oh that is right So I reckon, I don't know how big the roots are going to be on it, do I down there? That's the trouble. So I don't really know how much needs to be in, but I'm going to judge it by this, um, this melon here. I think I went for about a quarter or so full. Okay. So now I've got two down there. So I've got two bags. Um, there is another one down there that I'm going to try and transplant as well. Um, but it's a lot smaller and a lot weaker looking so I'm not really expecting it to survive but I thought well if I'm having one of them out I might as well have them both out right so that's that one that's this one I'll do that 
about the same amount and then we'll get them down there and we'll go and see if we can sort it out see if we can dig it up right okay let's go so this is the squash and i just had a look to see what it was called but the name's actually washed off the stick so i can't remember i'll have to have a look at which squash i've got i know which one it is i just can't remember the name anyway so this is it it's just started flowering um, so there's lots of flowers on it all ready to go now um i'm really really nervous about moving it you know i don't know if it's a good idea or not really um there's only a 50 50 chance that it's going to survive i suppose but then if i leave it here i'm going to lose it and i'm not going to have it at all so i'm going to have to give it a go i'm so nervous about digging it up so its roots seem to be back here so i'm going to give it quite a wide berth i'll try and dig around it and give it quite a wide berth um just trying not to damage any of the root system so anyway stop sitting here and procrastinating about it and give it a go aren't i right then here we go weeds around the bottom here actually let's see i don't want to bring any of them with me do i might as well pull them out first right so i think i look for going for over here right oh, i'm so scared let's dig here it's quite far away his roots there. There, I think I'm moving it there. That's it. There he goes. I don't know how far the roots go along here. And lift it. Okay, that's it. That's it. Right, okay. Right, let's try and make a nice little hole for it. I think I should have probably brought more compost than I have. Okay, so it's root. It's not actually got that much of a big root, really. I thought it was going to have a much bigger root. Let's get any weeds out. I don't want any weeds coming with it. Let's try and lift it really gentle. So I thought this bag would be good as well because it can just grow off out of the bag, which is quite good. Let's just sit it there. I think we'll take it back to the allotment like that and I think I'm going to have to put some more compost just around that root ball. Okay. Let's give him a little bit of support so we get back to the allotment like that. Okay, that's that one. It wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be actually. Let's have a go at the other one. Right then, let's try this one. Hopefully this one is nice and easy like the other one. Where he comes from over here I think. Start quite far back again. Might just be able to lift this one in one go. Okay. Oh, this one's not doing so well. Right, this one's out, but I don't think that one didn't come out. I think that's left some of its roots behind that one. I think it fits in the bag quite nicely. Right, so they're in the bags. We're gonna rush them back to the allotment in a second. Then we're gonna put some more compost on and find them somewhere to live. But just before we head up there, I thought I would quickly show you in here what I'm giving up. And I'm really, I'm, I'm really quite heartbroken about it, but I, I don't think, I think I'm just gonna kill them if I try and move them. You know, they're really well established plants now. And I think I'm just, I might as well just leave them for the people who are gonna come here. I have got other cucumbers on the go, but they're only small ones so far. Um, these ones are hopefully, hopefully I might be able to pick some because the, the man from the council has gone on holiday for two weeks. Um, so I'm hoping I might, I might get a harvest off this one here as a pickling cucumber and they're coming really fast and furious on it. So hopefully I might get to have a harvest off that one before we leave because he said he'd be back in two weeks and then he'll start writing to people who are on the list for it. So I mean it could really be three or four weeks before anyone actually takes it over. So fingers crossed I might get a harvest on it. But I've also got <laughs> four monster tomato plants in here that I've been doing my tomato experiment on that I'm going to have to find somewhere to put in the polytunnel. I don't think the people who I share with are going to be 
very impressed when I bring these giants up there. And I've also got the hay bale with the sweet potatoes, which I don't know what I'm going to do with. They don't, they don't look very healthy anyway. Um, and I've got the bag of sweet potatoes. They're, they're fine, the bag of sweet potatoes, that's fine. Um, but I don't know what I'm going to do with the hay bale. I mean, I suppose I'll have to move it. So I'm going to be really popular in my other polytunnel up there when I bring all this stuff in. <laughs> uh, let's have a quick look at these cucumbers before we head up. So this is the first side. I mean, look at them all. They're all just so beautiful. They're so productive. They need tying up really as well. Um, but look down here. So in here we've got, there's a few just coming and there's, there's so many cucumbers on it. Um, but hopefully I might get a couple or three or four before I have to give it up. Um, let's hope the next person likes cucumbers, I suppose. Um, so yeah, the cucumbers run all the way along there, but that's not just it. And then just here, look, there's more. I've got another, another load all the way along here as well. Um, yeah, there's my tomatoes at the back there. Matey there, don't look very well. He's not been watered enough. I need to give him some water. Um, yeah, it's the sweet potatoes in the bag. And then I've got this. So I don't know, maybe between us, me and my husband could move it but it's pretty heavy and waterlogged maybe they'll have to have my sweet potatoes as well and then there's two giant monsters over here too so yeah it's quite it's quite a lot to give up really but i think in the scheme of things you know i might miss out on all these cucumbers this year but i think in the future years going forward it'll probably be a lot better but it's quite sad it's so i thought this might be a good place for it here i've just sewn this bed with some baby um cabbages i think um yesterday so i thought it could just grow here it's a nice sunny spot it'll get lots of sun um but it is going to need some more compost around this one i think the other one's already wilting i only only moved it five minutes ago right so i've rolled this down enough because i thought it could just make its way off across here then as long as i'm careful and don't stand on it hopefully it'll be all right I'm just going to put a bit more compost just around the top of this root ball there and then I'll go and get some of my um, plant feed that I've got up here. I really hope it's going to be okay. It'd be such a shame if it dies after I've, you know, I've looked after it so much down on that other allotment, feeding it and watching it every day like my baby. Right. So that one's there and then it's got a nice bit of support coming down the bag and then it can climb off that way. So hopefully it'll be all right. This one is already looking a little bit wilty. I don't know if you can see this one. It's not as big. I'm my lap. Wet legs now. But it's already, um, it's already flopping. So let's roll him over so he can come out. him up a bit more and there as well make him a bit stable i just have to cross my fingers and hope for the best i suppose i'll keep an eye on them we'll come back and have another look at them next week and hopefully they make it i put this one in a little tray so maybe it'll retain some of the nutrients that i'm going to water through and i'll see if i can find one for the other one let's go and get some of the um the feed and we'll give it a feed and then we'll see how it goes so this is my barrel of fun that i made I'm going to take the lid off, but I'm not going to talk when I take the lid off because it absolutely stinks and I have to hold my breath. Um, but yeah, it's just a mixture of nettles and dock leaves and anything that I could find really with a bit of dirt from the chicken run floor as well added in. Um, right, it's been here for about three weeks now, so it's pretty smelly. I'm going to lift the lid off and grab some. It's really smelly okay so i put about i don't know two things of that in there and let's go and give them a good water and then hopefully some of the water will come out um, and it'll go into the bottom of that tray there just water this one over here as well 
So I just found a brick as well, so I sort of propped its, um, its runner up on a brick. Give it a bit more support. Right, hopefully it'll be okay. So that's it, they're all planted in and I'm just gonna cross my fingers now and wait for the next week or so and hopefully um, it manages to survive but like I say I've not lost anything anyway if I had left it there then I you know I wouldn't have had it anyway so we'll see fingers crossed and I just thought I'd finish the video here by one of my most beautiful beds um full of all these uh, calendula flowers that I grow every year I grow these calendulas with the intention of chopping their heads off and um, making a calendula oil but every year I just can't bear to because it just looks <laughs> so beautiful and so nice in all their different yellows and oranges that I just can't bear to chop their heads off so it's probably another year where I don't make any calendula oil but I've got really really beautiful beds <laughs> anyway thank you for watching today and uh, cross your fingers for me um, and I'll see you soon bye bye